And I was like, oh, I wonder where they're going with this. First, first thought was that it was a work. Uh, I thought it was a part of the storyline. And it wasn't. And I remember reaching out to Regal, uh, like, hey, do you have Brian's phone number? And uh, I think I had asked him about it, like, is this a work? And he said no. And got Brian's number from him and, and called him up, left him a message. He called me right back, and we had a conversation. And he told me what happened and that they uh, – you know, they had to let him go, and I was just like, "What? That that doesn't make Were any there complaints sense. from somebody? Is that what? Do you know? I mean, what... It's my understanding that it was a, a sponsor issue. It had to have been corporate, yeah. And it fell on Vince and the company, and you know, somebody had to take the blame. And he was the only he, guy that. And it it sucked at the time, um, and it it really sucked, like. <laughs> Being in the arenas and people would like, I'd get in the ring and they'd boo me and they would chant for Daniel and you got him fired and people would yell at me. I was going to ask you that if you took any heat for that. Yeah, I took a lot of heat and I would like try to explain to people like, no, I really like that guy. I've always anything with the situation. You're the one that made that situation so awesome too with him, but it wasn't that wasn't. You're not the one that had him fired. Oh, it wasn't on me, but no. you try explaining that to angry fans. You know, angry fans get hear one thing or get caught on one thing, and that's it. That becomes the truth. There's no reasoning. <laughs> no, and ten times out of ten, it turns out that that's not the truth, but it's what gets out and yep. um, what blew up. So I would get that a lot. I would I would get booed a lot. I would get, like, hate mail. Um and it would just be crazy because I really like Brian. So the, insane. <laughs> what I was getting at was the best part about it was he got to go out and do indies. And he doesn't care if he's in front of 50,000 people or 50 people. He just wants to be out there having good wrestling matches. So he got to go out there for like two months and do all these indie shots where he was the top guy. He could sell whatever merch. He could like he did awesome. Didn't and they then, have shirts with you choking you with the tie? Wasn't that yes? One? There's one that. on uh, <laughs> PWTs in my store. Um, um, uh. But it's it's like he had an awesome run over the summer. The the heat boiled down. He was able to go back to the company. Comes back to the company in the main event of SummerSlam yeah. with Bret Hart. You know it it worked out really well. And then since then. I mean, there was that roller coaster he went on where the crowd was behind him, but the office wasn't. And man, that just shows you how great he is that the crowd never left his side. And he was so over that it, it worked out. And yep. you can't keep a, a great talent down sometimes. He's one of the best things going in wrestling right now. His uh, heel work. It, it is. I am. It's I just caught it. His work. It's everything. So enter. He's. His personality now, him, heel Daniel Bryan, is probably my favorite wrestling character right now. I love it. Because Dude, the elements of realness. Tours on the buses. The what? The overseas tours on the buses. What about it? Were you on Bryan's bus? Uh, it, I feel like we were on different buses. I'm sure at one point early on we were, but I feel like we were always on opposite sides after a while. I I always liked him, and I liked his personality in the ring and in matches. But on the buses, that's where I got to like see his funny side and yeah. see how funny he was. Yep. He would always have Glenn sit behind him. Oh, that was yeah. always Glenn's seat. Yep. The seat behind him was always Glenn's seat. <laughs> Glenn, that was – I always – he – because Dan, I think, understands I'm being on the road and how, how tedious that can become and being away from home that you got to keep yourself entertained. And yep. he is he is great, and he, this is from him. He knows how to keep himself entertained, and he will bring other people into it, and even if it means me kind of jokingly making fun of other people. And shit I, and stirring. He's, he's, he's probably the biggest shit disturber in wrestling, <laughs> but he's so nice. Yeah, it's, it's like this. He gets it's a, a weird break, combination, and he's, and he's not a huge guy, so it's not as threatening for some reason when he does it. Like whereas if it's like if I was walking around or if. if somebody much larger like Big Show, it would be very bullyish. But with Daniel Bryan, he escapes that somehow. And yeah. it just creates but he it's he makes he lightens up any room that he's in, I think is is a is a fair thing to say. Agreed. And the stuff that he was doing with Glenn when when they were team hell no. Yeah. And it was just such a random pairing and it, it didn't should have worked sense. and it did. It was so dude, every night and you were there for this, every night the shenanigans with him and Kane at the end of the match. I used to video it on my cell phone. I have a bunch of those videos. Some it never got old. Never. Doc and I would sit at ringside and just 
like play along every night and just wait for them to do whatever they were going to do. And it was always funny. Do you remember and, we were uh, in Russia and I think they, for Glenn's birthday, Daniel gave a banana. <laughs> was it a banana? A banana and the hat. And, and the then Cena gave him the hat. So we had the two. I told that story in my book. <laughs> yeah, you did. It was so good. <laughs> so ra- he, he came up to me that night and he's like, I have this bat for Glenn's celebration. You have to keep this at ringside and give it to me when we come out for for this birthday celebration. I'm like, okay. And knowing how funny he is, I'm like, I can't wait to see what he has lined up because this is going to be funny. And when it happened, there was no out for it. There was no punchline. It was just, we're going to have Glenn stand there and hold a banana and wear a Russian hat. And then the plan was to leave. Yeah. It was just to leave him standing there. There was no out. For Katie, the big the... red machine to stand there in a Russian hat in a banana <laughs> with no out. And so they went to the back and we're all just like, what, what's happening? Where is this, where's this going? Where's the payoff? And I think they got to the back and someone, I don't know if it was Cena or somebody else, was like, you, you got to go back out there. You can't just leave him. And Glenn's standing there with his arm out with a banana with the Russian hats not sure if it's Wait. over or not, yeah. <laughs> and so finally they came back out and, and put closure to but there was no plan for it. That was it. He had this vision of Glenn with a banana in the Russian hat. And That's that... all he wanted. He just wanted that image of Glenn in the Russian hat with a banana. And he uh... got what he wanted, and he didn't give Glenn an out until the – it was – I remember the awkwardness and being in Russia and everyone was like just... – <laughs> In Moscow, it was yeah. – what, what a great and... memory. And when people ask, like, what's it like on the road? That's what it's like on the road. Yeah, that's, you go out there and you put on a show, yeah. but it's just so much random stuff the with events. so many random characters. We yeah. all have our quirks. Yeah. Everybody's got quirks. All of us are weird. Yeah. We weird. all do weird things, have weird traits, uh, and that's what makes it fun. Everybody just goes out there, and at the same time, while we're having fun, while you guys are entertaining the audience and putting smiles on faces, that is a real thing. You guys are also real life superheroes and constantly meeting kids and meeting adults who are, you know, going through things and uh, just making people forget about what's going on and really just you're having fun, you're entertaining, and you guys are superheroes making differences in people's lives. So find me something better than that and I'll become a fan, but that's why I think there is nothing better than pro wrestling. Agreed 100%. And uh, before I, I wrap up, and I always ask one question with every guest on here, but before I get to that, I'll quickly touch on if you remember this, because I talked about it on Jericho's podcast, the in Brooklyn, the, Ooh. the Arnold Schwarzenegger. Ooh. Arnold Schwarzenegger. I never talked it. about this. And I was like, I before, right before I, I called you, I go, this, but I heard you talk about it on Jericho's show. Yeah. So for me, Arnold is the one I'm. I have a picture in my house. I've never asked anybody for a picture and autograph my entire life. I've never, I'm not like, I just don't, I, I understand the people like people like that. That's what like people. And I always just, I like remembering things mentally usually. And I'm not like, I'm just different. I'm weird. my dad got me an autograph when I was a kid from Mr. Miyagi from karate kid. And awesome. I ripped it up in his face. He, he what? Yeah. I, I go, this doesn't mean anything. It's a, it's Did he a, sign Mr. Miyagi oh, and not Pat Morita or something? He signed, yeah, he signed. No, it was he <laughs> signed it as Mr. Miyagi, and I loved the Karate Kid movie. But something, <laughs> as a kid, Justin, I thought it was so stupid. I just ripped it up right in front of my dad, and I go, this means nothing. I go, it's just a writing on a piece of napkin. I go, it doesn't mean anything. And he, I got, I don't know if he, I, I, I want to say I got the belt that night because I remember crying pretty bad. Uh, but I was very young, but I, so, but Arnold's the one guy for, for many years and I've kind of evolved past it. There's a lot of elements of Arnold. I, I admire and like, but I've never really looked up to anybody. I'm not like, I, I just don't, there's, there's not that many people, but I, I like elements of Arnold, but it was the one I'll never forget it. He's in Brooklyn. He's the guest host. So he's the one guy where I was kind of, there was a little bit of excitement, excitement in this, in this body for once. And I was like, I can't, you know, if, if Arnold's here and I, if it happens naturally, it happens naturally. I'm not going to go searching. People were going to him and getting photos throughout the day and whatnot. But so I'm there, I'm in gear. I just got taped up. I'm already pumped up. I'm feeling good. I couldn't have been a more perfect situation. I come around the corner out of the trainer's room and I see an entourage of people and Arnold 
And he just happens to look me up and down and stops. And he, we start talking and start having a conversation. And I don't even remember what it was, but it was, it was happening. And I was, it was like, I don't know if I didn't know if I had my phone. If I, I don't know if I would have asked for a picture. I don't even know. But I just know we were having a conversation, and out of nowhere, this is all I remember, is Justin Roberts swoops in, Arnold Schwarzenegger, can I get a picture? And you got a picture with him, I believe. And then his entourage rushed him away into his room. And I remember just standing there thinking, what the f*** just happened? Like, where did my conversation go with Arnold? We didn't get to, there was so much I thought we were going to talk about that naturally that wasn't planned, and it was over. And then I remember the rest of the night, I was just like, I don't want to say I was bummed out, but I was, I go, man, what a missed opportunity. What, we, what was he going to compliment my physique? What, what, I don't know. <laughs> to this day, I'll never know unless I meet him in some other, but do you have any recollection of that at all? Did you even see me? <laughs> <laughs> you can't see me. Uh, so 100%, I remember the situation. I didn't know it from your perspective. Yeah. And before I say anything, I will apologize. Uh, now, no, 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 no. Of course, I apologize for that because that's awful. That is awful. I had been waiting Hilarious. all day to try to meet him. Not the same way that you did because I get it. You you have that special admiration for Arnold yeah. because you're into a lot of the same thing. I totally get that. For me, it was just that's really cool. It's Arnold Schwarzenegger. You're big on though with photos. You like you have like with celebrities and things, right? Like getting you like getting like photos of stuff with dude, people though, right? I I am and it, it's really funny because Timmy Baltimore just brought – do you know Timmy? I do. I have know Tim from Louisville, awesome. Kentucky. Timmy Baltimore just brought this to my attention a couple of weeks ago. It's something I've never thought about. He goes, I'm reading your book, and you're just like Tom Hanks in Big. You're a kid who's going through this adventure. You're working on the road. But you could still tell that the kid is still inside you, and you're just like in the body of an adult. But you're a kid going through this. Yep. And when I think about everybody that I was on the road with and working with Bret Hart and Hulk Hogan yes. and uh, just all of these guys from my childhood and when guys became our bosses, you know, like when the agents were Mike Rotunda and yep. Ted DiBiase. IRS putting together your matches. 